to the homestead. This video is gonna be a little bit hard to believe, right? But I just gotta keep letting you guys know about this stuff. Some of you guys might not know. And I'm just here to tell you, there, build back better means tear it all down. I've been saying that from the beginning. The minute I heard build back better, the first thing that came to my mind was tear it all down. Like, like that's the only way you can build back better, is if you tear it all down. Right? So I hope you guys are ready. What we're going to talk about today is Jackson, Mississippi. You guys have been following what's going on in Jackson, Mississippi. What they're going to do, I'm just here to tell you, is they're going to put a lot of pressure on your public utilities. Okay? They're going to raise your electric bills so much, like four, five, six, seven, maybe ten times. Right? They're going to choke you out. Your other infrastructure is going to be starting to falter. Right? Like look at this water situation down there in Mississippi bad news you need food and water to live and shelter is okay I mean it keeps you high and dry right but you can live without shelter you can find stuff and move around but you got to have food and you got to have water and you can actually live without food for quite a while but water you just can't do it right so we live off-grid in a log cabin that we built ourselves you probably saw it when I walked by it there this morning and uh, we grow 90% of our own food. We live 100% off rainwater. We got a little bit of a rainy day today after, must have been a good, I don't know, two weeks, almost three weeks with no rain. Everything was super dry. Um, my pastures are starting to feel it a little bit. But every building uh, that we have, because we live 100% off rainwater, we collect water off of each building. Now, some of y'all, uh, probably live in a place where you can collect rainwater and you're still just being 100% dependent on the system, right? Even for your livestock or even for your garden or even for any of that stuff, right? You're not being self-sufficient, right? You're just using the system because it's there and it's convenient and they're going to mess with that convenience, okay? So in this video, real quick, what I want to do is walk you guys through my system, my rainwater catchment system, so you can implement this at your place, right? And it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. Don't worry about if your town tells you you can't collect water, right? Don't worry about it, okay? I'm telling you, Doug said don't worry about it. I need water for my sustenance. If my town tells me I cannot collect rainwater, then we're going to battle right because they're not going to stop me from living right a it's in the constitution right that i have the the right right for life liberty and the pursuit of happiness right and my life and liberty depends on water and i'm not going to let any government situation tell me that i cannot collect rainwater see it's kind of getting a little rain on your lens here right so i'm just telling you man i'm i'm going to stand up for my rights i don't care what you guys do but I'm just telling you how it's going to go down here at our place, right? And I'm going to have more videos coming up on how we're going to try to battle all this stuff. Because they're coming for you and you and you and you and you and everybody. <laughs> Unless you're in the club, they're not coming for you. The biggest barn I have on the property, okay? So this is where we collect our rainwater. Now, when we first got to our off-grid location, I wasn't sure how we were going to do the water. Okay, because around here a lot of people have the wells, right? But we live by the Amish. A lot of the Amish have the rainwater, right? And a lot of the Amish, they don't even filter the rainwater. And we uh, have filtered our rainwater. And then we recently, a couple years ago, added the Berkey. Because we noticed a lot of the chemtrails were beefing up upstairs there. Yeah, old Smokey Joe. All right, so we weren't sure how we were going to do it. You guys got to kind of figure out how you're going to do it. Uh, we looked into building a well around here. Our water's about 500 feet down. You know what I mean? Like, you guys watch these off-grid videos, and not every... You can't just go somewhere and implement all the systems because every place is different, right? You can't use a ram pump right around here because I don't have any flowing water. Ram pumps suck, literally. Because ram pumps use suction of the passing water to push the water up or to wherever you want it, right? So if you don't have a constant flow of water that you can just waste, right, you can't use a ram pump. And a lot of people don't know that. Everyone, You guys even send me stuff about putting in a ram pump, right? I'm OG veteran, 13 years. I've looked at all of it, seen it all. You know, the only thing we're hung up on is solar. I know there's some... Good stuff there, but you know, it's not good stuff. <laughs> and that's why we don't have it, right? But eventually maybe, I don't know. So we couldn't put in the well and we were trying to figure out uh, what we were gonna do for the water. So I was gonna dig a pit in the ground 
collect the water off of the roof into the ground and use pitcher pumps at the uh, sinks, you know, like the Amish do, right? And so we started doing that project, me and Noe, my Amish buddy, and that turned into a big mess, right? So then I started really thinking about it again, doing some more homework, and I'm gonna just share, see, I'm saving you guys money, I'm saving you time, I'm saving you aggravation, and all you have to do is hit that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, it's all for free, right? All right, so then that's when I figured out um, I was gonna do some rainwater catchment off of this building, and then I had to figure out how I was gonna get it over there to the log cabin, right? Because that's probably 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe about 80 feet, 100 feet maybe, right? And hold on, I gotta show you this because it's kind of hard to see. From the log cabin, you can kind of see it kind of goes up, right? There's about a five to eight, there's about an eight foot fall there actually from standing right there to right there okay the bottom of those tanks are level with the sink inside of our house of course it has to be that way because you have to have that fall for the gravity right because water takes the path of least resistance okay so when you start dropping any kind of little drop like that the water is just going to go whew. and that's how we're doing it we're just gravity feeding it into our uh, house there our log cabin and I also put lawn hydrants in outside. I'll show you those in a second. So our saying here is no pumps, no power, no problem, right? You guys gotta just think outside the box and follow off grid with Doug and Stacy for all these cool tips and tricks. Let's go inside and see the tanks. Some of you guys have probably seen this before, right? Because some of you guys are good OG subscribers and you've been here trying to learn these systems so you can be prepared for such a time as this. And some of you guys have never seen this before and you're gonna think, now that's a pretty slick setup. I think Doug's one of the best off-grid channels on YouTube and Facebook. <laughs> All right, so this is the front side of the barn. This is the horse stall, right? I sectioned this area off here. On that side there, I've got my shop where I do you know, my work on machines and stuff for the woodlot for my sawmill and stuff. And then on this side here, I put this door in and I build this water cave. Because we're in the cold area, right? We get down to below zeros right in the winter time there was a time a couple years ago where i really had a struggle keeping this room warm enough for the water not to freeze and it was a big struggle right and so the following year started doing some more thinking and researching see this is what this stuff takes man and uh i figured out that like the house down there that i was going to spray foam this whole room right and now i can heat it with a candle it was a big struggle before all right so what we have is two 1500 gallon tanks right that collect this rainwater. i'm going to show you right now and then i'm going to explain to you don't go anywhere because i'm going to explain to you about the tanks about the first flush how to calculate the water that comes off your roof and then i'm going to close out the video so don't go anywhere just hang tight now when we first got here too this building didn't even have any gutters on it so i put five inch gutters on there the biggest ones i could get seamless too so you don't want the seams in there because then you're always fighting with the water dripping out and you got to seal it and i mean it's just I just went with the seamless. I got a video on it way back in the library when they came out and did the, I thought that was a big deal. <laughs> when we first got out here, man, I mean, we were on a super tight budget and we still are. Like we live on a super tight budget, right? And I'm gonna do a Dave Ramsey video and it's gonna rock your world. But uh, so when we put these uh, gutters on, it was like, you know what I mean? And then we knew we were going on to the rain catchment and we had been hauling water. See, that's why another bunch of, bunch of y'all can't even live off grid or you won't even survive the coming apocalypse because you just can't handle adversity, you know, for four or five years, six years, some ridiculous amount of time. We were hauling water in one gallon jugs, five gallon containers. I mean, wherever we went, we would try to get some water and fill it up. Stacy goes into town once a week to live with her 92 year old aunt to keep her company once a, one day, you know, she spends the night. Fill up jugs, bring them home. Go to friend's house, fill up jugs, bring them home. I mean, you guys don't know nothing about the commitment, right? I mean, we were committed and going for it. And that's why I know a lot of you guys I mean, you just couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Because you don't have it. You don't have the, you don't have the grit. They're they're domesticating Americans. You know, we used to have so much grit, and now they're slowly weeding the grit out. So I put my five-inch gutters on there, and then on the corner of each building, they both come right down here, and they meet right in the middle, and they go into the building. And I put the four-inch uh, pipes up there, PVC. No water stays in there. It all goes right inside. So the water comes in. 
first place it goes is into this first flush, okay? Now, you have to size your first flush, and I'm gonna tell you that in a minute, hang on. So there's the first flush. This whole tank fills up first. This one right here, that's why they call it the first flush. Fills, 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 fills. Now no more water can go in there, right? Because it's totally fill. But that's filled with all the dirty water, right? Because there's a calculation, I'm gonna share it with you. Now the water has to take the path of least resistance so it starts backing up and then it goes in there and then it goes right into this tank, okay? This tank, as it fills, right? Fills, fills, simultaneously fills the next door tank. See that pipe right there? Fills, 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 fills. If it gets all the way up here, shares the water too. So these two tanks fill together at the same time. And I have a whole playlist about this whole setup, right? I was back in the day, I was using my phone and cheesy music, and I, I showed you guys, I documented the whole process. They're not the greatest videos. I mean, I don't know if any of ours are the greatest videos, but we just try to give you that information. That's what it's about, right? Because knowledge is power. And if you guys can see, wow, this can be done, right? Then that'll start turning your wheels. Like all you have to see is that it's possible, right? Because they're telling you everything is impossible, right? So there it is. Gravity feeds down to my house. I'm going to show you the lawn hydrant. I'm going to give you the calculations, right? And then I'm going to talk about this rumor they got floating around on the uh, internet, right? About rainfall. And I just want to tell you guys, like, when we came out here 13 years ago, we had several things that were pushing us this way, right? <laughs> Stacy had health issues, so we were trying to dial that in, right? And we were figuring it out that it was because of the food, right? And so that was a huge driver for us. All the taxes we were paying at our other house, we had a big house in town, and it was like almost $6,000 a year, right? Just to live in the house, not, like, not including anything, just to live in the house. It's like $6,000 a year. So I started, you know, year after year, you're sending that tax money in and you're like, man, what is this for? I, all they do is tell me I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't have a, a this kind of fence, I can't have chickens in my backyard, I, you know what I mean? Everything in, in there, I'm paying to be dependent on the system and then I gotta pay for everything on the system. <laughs> I don't know, so there was just a lot of things going on that had us drive out here. Uh, you know drove us out here not to drive out here, but you know drove us out here and and I tell the story often that it's like we're led Okay, like nothing me and Stacy are doing we didn't you know know like you know YouTube was some hot place to make videos And so we started posting or anything I'll tell you this whole story in a video coming up this week, right? But we basically a friend said man You should show people what you're doing because what you're doing is so cool, right? And we didn't know like it's so cool, but we just thought man we're growing our food, we're doing our thing, we're living happy lives the way God intended, right? We're working by the sweat of our brow and all that stuff. I don't want to make this a long video, but we had all this stuff going on, so all these things mattered. But I'm going to show you right now, this is our food forest, but I'm going to show you this uh, hydrant here and how the water comes out. All gravity, and if you didn't know it, you would think that was just a spigot. So see, man, everything is possible. You don't need the system, right? The system needs you. <laughs> so check out of that mug, will you? Start doing your own stuff. Do the best you can where you are. If you can just eliminate some of it, you're doing way better than you are right now, right? Not doing nothing. All right, so I'm gonna show you the faucet inside I had to make, and then uh, I'm gonna give you the calculations so you can figure out how to collect rainwater off of your stuff, how much tanks you need, and all that stuff, okay? Hang tight. So this here is the spigot uh, for the inside of the cabin here. I'm inside of our log cabin here. And what it is is I had to actually make a faucet because you can't, you can't run anything gravity fed through anything you can buy at the store, right? Because everything is regulated because you waste too much water. So Big Brother has to build it into the faucet. So when you get it, it works like garbage. <laughs> uh, but this is the one I built right here. This right here is our overflow tank. So those big tanks that are inside the building, once they fill up, we actually send that extra water out here to this big tank, and then that takes care of all of our chickens, right? So every building collects rain. All of our systems are in place to provide for the wife and I and for our animals, right? And it's all from the Father, right? He gives us the rain. And you know the only time he says he's going to hold back the rain from your land? When you aren't following the commandments, right? When you aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. He says those are the people 
that he will hold the water from the land, right? Because water is life. I don't know, you know, I ain't saying there's no judgment going on, but you know, just stuff to make you think, right? Just, just, I just want you guys to think about stuff. Like think about that brown poop water coming out of her uh, faucet. What do you think about that? <laughs> In America, right? There's brown poop coming out of your faucet and they're trying to convince you that living off grid is uh, somehow gonna be bad for your health or bad for you or not safe. Ha! So length times width is your square foot on your roof, right? And then how much rain you get. And an easy formula to remember is if you get one inch of rain on a thousand square foot roof, it's 623 gallons of water collected, right? So you take your length times width, square foot of the roof, and then you figure out one inch, two inch, three inches of rain, then you times that by 0 0.623. So if you have a 1,000 square foot roof and you get one inch of rain you're going to collect 623 gallons of water let's do some quick math there for you <laughs> now i'm going to explain to you how to calculate your first flush system that's the all the dirty roof roof water has to go into that first right and then the clean water will be delivered out to your big tanks right you always want to have a first flush system even if you're using a little gutter system for maybe your garden right just flush it off they have these little in-system flushers for that um just, you know, you want to get that bird poop, the pollen, uh, like out here we have dust from the road come up. So that first one. So I'm going to explain to you real quick about uh, cleaning off the roof and stuff too. Man, this, I don't want these videos to be too long because you guys click off. You got short attention spans. It's raining today, right? If I know it's going to rain tomorrow or the next day or the next day, I'll leave that water in the first flush, okay? That's what I'll do, I'll just leave it in there. I use that first flush water to water the horses. They can drink any of this water, it's no problem, they're animals. So I'll, I'll give that to them, right? So if their tanks are full or you know half full, or, I just don't worry about it. But if I know there's no rain coming for a week or two weeks, then I'll start aggressively kind of using that water, filling up the trough for them, you know, aggressively using it, right? Because I want that thing to be empty when the next rain comes if it's longer than a couple days. Because then I want the whole roof to get cleaned off again and start the system all over again, right? So that's how you do that. Now to calculate your first flush, here's how you do it. There's a couple of different ways you can uh, calculate the first flush uh, setup, right? But the one way you want to calculate it is how big the roof is and how much pollution or dirt you think is going to be on there. So that's a little bit tricky right because you know out here we have like I said the dust the pollen maybe some sticks if you guys are by trees you know we have our barn out here in the wide open no trees if you guys have trees that's another thing to consider so you just gotta have all these things into play and I would overestimate it right like you want it to be on the side of extra clean versus on the side of a little bit dirty you want to size your first flush 10 gallons for every thousand square feet collecting okay so you wanna make sure the first 10 gallons goes in, right? And our, our tank there is 3,000 gallons, two 1,500 gallon tanks, and that's a 175 gallon first flush diverter, right? So you guys gotta do your own math because this is not cookie cutter stuff. Just like in our country, just like with our schools, just like with everything, it's not one size fits all, it's all individual. That's why, this sounds crazy, but that's why the founders said about individual freedom, right? We have to do what's right, what we're pursuing, right? Not what groupthink wants us to do. All right, so that's it for us. If you like this information, right, which I'm sure you do, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out if you haven't already. And uh, share our video. Share this with your friends. You can scale this down super small, right? So you guys can definitely uh, have some sustenance. Um, for yourselves, right? Quit co-opting out your life to the man because he's going to hit the switch on you and you're not going to like it. Another thing too, we have friends in Arizona that live 100% off rainwater, okay? So you, you can do this anywhere. We have friends in Australia that live 100% off rainwater, okay? These are barren lands, I'm trying to tell you, okay? And they're doing it. You just have to make bigger systems. Everything is dependent on your water, okay? And the water doesn't go bad. I'll do a whole other video about that stuff. But you just have to size your uh, systems accordingly. If you got questions, we've got answers. Try to ask them down in the comment section. I do read all the comments. Maybe not every single one, but I do read the comments. Scare I try to answer them when I have natural. time. And, Quit you know, letting as them scare you from everything stuff, natural. Right? They're taking so we'll you from you God's on the design. Next video, right? and hopefully, we right found some bad designs. Information. And you're almost going along with Now, you guys stay to the very end, so you're going to get this little bit of uh, nugget here, right? <clears throat> what they're doing right now is they're training your brain, okay? 
to dismiss everything natural, right? Boys are girls, girls are boys, don't eat meat, farts too much. Everything is going to the unnatural, right? Against God's plan, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how to explain it to you guys, but don't you see it? They don't want you eating meat. They want you eating bugs and chemicals, right? They don't want you living off of uh, rainwater, right? So they tell you guys, the rainwater is so contaminated, nothing, you should not drink it. Don't do anything with it. Don't touch it. Y'all, rainwater touch everything. Rainwater touches these plants. They touch these trees. They touch your apples. They touch your watermelons. They touch, everything is touched by the rainwater. But yet they're going to hype you up and believe you like, don't drink it. <laughs> they're scaring you from everything natural. Quit letting them scare you from everything natural. They're taking you from God's design, right? And putting you right into man's design. And you're almost going along with it willy nilly. So there's my little advice for you, right? Get back to all things natural, right? Grow your own food. Stop buying that chemical processed. Anything in a box at the store, right? Is not good for you. Anything in a box at the store is not good for you. Anything at a drive through window that you guys go eat is not good for you, okay? So stop going for the all unnatural stuff. Get back to the natural stuff, right? Let's get our, our, let's stop being domesticated, okay? And let's get back to how God wants us to live. That's all I got for you now for real. <laughs>